Is the mic on? Can you hear me now? Yeah, awesome. I'm a friend of God. Wow. Hey, teens. I'm really glad to be here. It's uh, our time this morning. And uh, the good news is that uh, we actually have a marquee arriving today, a bit of our own space. So isn't that good, hey? Isn't that good? God is good. God is good. All the time? God is good. God is great. That's right. That's right. Hey, yesterday we, uh, we talked about being unashamed for Jesus, didn't we? Yeah. And how Jesus, he's chosen us. Yeah. And a lot of people yesterday made a decision to also choose Jesus. And today I also am going to give you the opportunity to make another decision. Every, every time I get up here, um, I'm going to be calling for decisions. Well, it's not me calling for decisions, but it's, it's God calling you to a decision. Today we're learning about how God is, is faithful to us. God is faithful to us, how he has been pursuing us from the very day we were born. Did you know that? From the very day we were born, God locked eyes on us, on us and said, I want you. And he's been pursuing you ever since. And the appeal I'm going to be making today at the end of the talk is one of that of stop running from God and start walking with God. He has chosen us, and yesterday a lot of people said, I want to choose Jesus. And today I'm going to give you the opportunity to be faithful to Jesus and start walking with Jesus and stop running from Jesus. opportunity to thank the team that is here, and Pastor Nigel, and, and just the whole conference that you teams are a part of, because I'm not sure if you guys realize it or not, but uh, they didn't just pay for my flights. The, the conference that you're a part of, they paid for my wife's flights as well, which is awesome. Uh, so we had time to come over here, both of us came over together, and it really shows me that, that your conference believes in relationships, because they honoured my relationship with my wife. They believe in relationships. And have a guess what we're going to be talking a little bit about today? Relationships. Ooh, it's come to that time already. Oh, it's come, can you rub your hands together? Ooh, yes. It's come time to talk a little bit about relationships. Relationships, that's right. That's right. Hey, I want to read a Bible verse to you guys. This talks about God's relationship with us. I have in my hands here, anyone know what this is called? What is it? Bible. Okay. I thought it was God's diary. Maybe I got it wrong. No, no, no. Sorry. You know, these days we don't really have diaries. You know, back in the 90s and so on, when I grew up, you know, you had diaries. A lot of the girls did anyways, you know, dear diary, and they'd write their love life in there. And the boys would always try and steal the girl's diary to see if, you know, like, if they liked them or not. But nowadays it's just Instagram, Snapchat, you know, everyone can see that stuff. Um, <laughs> that's just, that's the modern diary. Well, here's, here's God's Instagram, here's God's Snapchat. And this is God's love letter to us. And I want to read it to you. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39, it says this, ready? It should be up on the screen as well. Here it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. What a diary entry that is. Wow. Hey teens, let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are faithful to us. And Lord, as we open your word and we learn a little bit about your faithfulness, we just ask that you will speak, Lord, speak to our hearts in your holy, holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. When I was a little kid, and I'm sure when you were a little kid as well, who here believed in boys and girls germs? Do you have this, that sort of thing? Okay, I see some hands up. Yeah, yeah. You're running around now. I see a lot of people who didn't. You know, some people just came out of the womb and was just like, wow, there's the opposite sex, you know, really attracted to it. But when I came out, you know, and I was a little kid running around, it was like, ew, get away from me. And all the girls would be like, ew, don't touch me, you know, like, just 
get away, you know, like, you'd run around and some of the games that you would play, right, it's like you had to touch the girl and, oh, shake your hand, go and wash your hand because, you know, girls, germs, uh, you know, what, did anyone else, no, no, this is a time of honesty here, anyone else ever play catch and kiss? Oh, okay, there's some people are being honest here. I was, oh, I remember these girls play catch and kiss. And when you're a little boy and girls play catch and kiss around you, you're just like, oh, you're terrified. Like, it's the most scariest thing you've ever, like, experienced in your whole life. This girl catches you and tries to kiss you. It's like, oh, no, girls' germs. That's what I was like when I was a kid. And I remember when I was in kindergarten, you know, it was girls' germs and boys' germs. But I remember there was this one particular person in our classroom. This one particular male boy. He was only in kindergarten, but he broke all the rules. Ooh. He didn't believe in uh, boys' and girls' germs. No, 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 no. He had a girlfriend in kindergarten. Jeez, but that was a big thing in kindergarten, right? Like, do you think back to your kindergarten days, you know? Now, I don't think you actually have... Do you have kindergarten over here? Or you just go straight into year one? You do have kindergarten? You do have? Okay, okay, okay. The early years, right? <clears throat> Anyways, he didn't just have one girlfriend. He had two girlfriends. Woo! Woo! Wow. I remember watching this guy, you know, he had, he had two girlfriends and... and uh, he was just breaking all the rules, and it was kind of like inspirational, like, you know, like, wow, like, like you don't believe in girls' germs? And I remember I thought, wow, maybe I need a girlfriend. In fact, maybe I need two. And so I remember, uh, you know, when you're a little in kindergarten, you know, you don't have chairs, you know, the teacher calls you to the front, it's the start of school, children, you know, and uh, come sit on the floor and, uh, you know, sit on the floor and your legs are crossed. And uh, here was me sitting on the floor. And on my left, I had a girlfriend. Ooh, things are moving. I had a girlfriend. On this side, my arm was wrapped around here. And on this side, I had my other girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> now, I didn't even know what that meant at the time. You know, it was just girlfriend. Cool. But my other friend, he was sitting on the other side of her. And on his right? He had his girlfriend. But on his left, he had his other girlfriend. We, we, shared, we, we, we shared a girlfriend. <laughs> we didn't even realize what was going on at the time, you know, but people used to call us uh, the kindergarten pimps. That's right. We were the kindergarten players. <clears throat> now, uh, well, that's what I called myself anyways. I didn't even know what that meant uh, until I got a little bit older. You know, when, when you grow up and, you, you know, you get past the kindergarten stage, you know, you start moving out of primary school and into high school, uh, you know, all of a sudden you start looking at the, the fellas, you know, you start looking at the girls and all of a sudden they start looking a little bit different. Like, what? Wow, I've never seen you in this way before. Wow. And all the girls start looking at the guys and they're still a little bit like, ew, 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 get away from me, uh, until a little bit later. But then they start looking at the guys like, Wow. Like, those pimples, uh, I don't see them, they're pretty attractive, you know, like, this is, that's, the, you know, that's the way it is, isn't it? That's the way it is. I remember when I was growing up and I started going through high school and I started having these feelings, it was really strange, it was really weird, and, and I remember having my first girlfriend. Now, I need to be careful what I say about my first girlfriend because my wife's sitting in the room. But I remember my first girlfriend. Now, these were in my BC days. And what do you think I mean when I say my BC days? These were in my BC days. Before what? Before Christ. That's exactly right. Before Christ, in my BC days, all right, I wanted a girlfriend, okay? Probably for all the wrong reasons as well. I wanted a girlfriend. But I remember in my BC days, you know, I wanted her for a certain reason. But halfway through, like, us dating, you know, I was 15 at the time, any 15-year-olds in the room? Okay, one, two, three, four, okay, just a few 15-year-olds. I was your age at the time. And I started kind of wanting to know a little bit more about Jesus. And I remember when I was dating this girl and she found out that I actually wanted to learn a little bit more about Jesus. You know what she said to me? She's like, well, Jack, does this mean I then come second? in your life. 
oh, man, that hit. And I was like, oh, wow, what do I say? What do I say? I need to, I need to somehow please this girl, you know. And uh, uh, oh, no, no, of course not. You're always first, babe. But in my heart, I was like, Jack, you know you've got to put Jesus first. I started pursuing Jesus more and more, more and more, and uh, I didn't realize Jesus was actually pursuing me. And the more I came close to Jesus, and I gave my heart to Jesus, you know, my prayer changed about this girl. I used to pray about this girl, and uh, my prayer changed from just being in a relationship to her, in a relationship with her, to, Lord, even if you have to break us up, I just want her to know Jesus. Funny enough, we broke up. And three months later, she came to know Jesus and she was baptized. Wow. Why isn't God good? Isn't God good? I'm going to talk a little bit about relationships today, but I want to talk a little bit about God's relationship with us, actually a majority about God's relationship with us. You know, after my first girlfriend, my first serious girlfriend, not the, the two in kindergarten, after my first serious girlfriend's, I remember saying to God, I was like, God, the next girl I'm going to date is the girl I'm going to marry. In other words, I'm not just going to go out and find a girl and force her to marry me. But in other words, the next girl I want to date will be a girl who, you know, is a girl that I want to be serious with. I want to be in a relationship with this girl. Why just date for dating's sake? You know, I wanted to date a girl and to actually, that would be the experience where I, where I you know, say, this is a girl I actually want to pursue and actually want to marry. And you know, it took five years. How many years? Five years I was single for. The first year, I was like, yeah, God, I, you know, I'm chasing after you. You're number one in my life. I don't need a girl in my life. You know, it's all good. And I was all good. Uh, year two, it was like, yeah, Jesus, you know, it's all about you. It's all about you. Year three, it was like, yeah, Jesus, where's the girl? Uh, but it's okay. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Year four, it was like, oh, Jesus, I love you. Where's the ladies at? And year five came. And I was in college now at the time, going in college. And, you know, I was praying and I was like, you know, Jesus, you know, you're all I need. You're all I need. But, you know, there are some really good looking girls around. And Lord, you know, like it's getting to that time in life where I'm thinking about, you know, maybe marriage. Now, I don't know if you guys are thinking about that yet, but you will. You will. But I know you're thinking about one another. I know that. Anyways, I remember praying, and I was praying for a, for a girl at this stage, but I said, no, Jesus, you're first, you're first, you're first. And I remember there was a, a bit of a break in college, and there was a play going on. You know, dramas, you know what they, they have, a, a play, not just drama in your own life, but an actual play. And uh, college church was, was holding this drama. Now, some of the boys from Watson Hall, which is you know, where all the boys would stay on campus, were like, oh, we're going to go and watch this play. And I'm like, what? Like, I've got so many better things to do. Like, why would I want to go and watch a play? Why would I want to go and watch that? Anyways, for some reason, you know, I just ended up and there was nothing else to do. And I was sitting there and we're watching this drama about, I can't even remember what it was about. And anyway, I was just watching this drama and then all of a sudden, I see this girl walk on stage. I see her walk on stage. Now, she hasn't, she hasn't really got any speaking roles. She's just in the background. But the whole time this drama was on, my eyes were just locked on her. And I was just thinking, who is that? Oh, my gosh. I was nudging the guys beside me. Do you see that girl? What the? What in the world? I've never seen a more beautiful thing in my life. Now, to this day, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I have no idea what the drama was about. <laughs> I just remember this girl. And I just remember thinking and joking to myself, imagine if I dated her. Woo! Wow! You know, she was a 12 out of 10. You know, like... Now, now fellas, let me, let me say this to you. You should never number girls. But when you see the one, you know, you might be praying for a 10. But when you find the one... She's, she's more than a 10 out of 10. So I see this girl on stage and I'm thinking, how on earth can I meet this girl? 
I'm, I'm, I'm a theology student, you know, I'm committed to my church. I'm like, you know, like all, all the young couples go to college church, but I was at this other church where I was committed. I was a youth leader at the time. And I was just like, God, you know, like, uh, I, I've got to be at this church, you know, but like, how am I going to find a girl when I'm at this church that's full of old people? <sighs> I was a youth leader. There's a few young people, but, you know, it's a little bit weird the youth leader trying to pursue one of the people he's mentoring. That's weird. And uh, there wasn't really anyone I was really interested in anyways. But one day, one day, here I am welcoming the youth to the, to the church. And the church is down the bottom of this hill. And at the top of the hill is the car park. And at the top of the car park, I just see this light. It's just, just shining. And it's just like these angels... <laughs> Are just, are just singing out like, oh, you know, like uh, on, on the movies. And there she was, the same girl I saw at the play. And she was coming down the hill. I was like, what on earth is going on, God? She is coming to me. Anyways, I introduced myself. I said, hi, my name's Jack. She said, hi, my name's Sam Tara. I said, what? Sam Tara. Sam Tara? No, Sam Tara. That's my wife's name, by the way. We got chatting and uh, started getting interested. Hey, 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 hey. So let me tell you the rest of the story now. Started getting interested, you know, and I, and I was trying to pick out things that, you know, she was, she was curious in and so on. And we, we had a really good, just a real, that was like the best church, church service I've ever experienced. I don't know why. It just, it just was. It was just like, wow, praise Jesus. Oh, praise Jesus. You know, just, just, just couldn't stop looking at her. And then I did the thing that we all do. I did some Facebook stalking. I had to do my research. I had to do my research. Now, now it's more like Instagram or, or, or Snapchat stalking. But in my day, it was, it was more Facebook stalking. And I was like, I've got to, you know, find some common interest in this girl. And I saw on her Facebook page, she was a runner. She was into running. And I thought, you know, like, oh, like, I, I run, like, that's, that's like a common thing, you know, I, 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 have, I have runners, and so I thought, okay, that's it, the next morning I get up, I'm going for a run, you know, so I got up the next morning, and uh, I got my shoes out, and I just, I just, just uh, blew the dust off them, and uh, did my shoelaces up, and it was from that day that I literally started pursuing my wife. I started running, and you know, I hadn't run in ages. I was like, oh yeah, I'll do a few Ks. Got to the, past the first K, I was like, oh, what am I doing? No, just think of this girl, just think of this girl. And my housemates who I was living with at the time, you know, they drove past, and they, they heard me talking about this girl, and I said she was a runner and everything, and they saw me running. They've never seen me running before. They did down the window, they'll beep, they'll beep, 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 ha, laughing at me running. As I was, they were driving past me, just cracking up. They thought it was hilarious. But I was running, you know, I had my eyes fixated on the prize, you know, that, that might... Yeah, she's not a prize, she's my wife. Yeah. Anyways, I had my eyes fixated on her, and I was chasing, and I was running. I was literally pursuing my wife. The next time I saw her uh, was at church, and uh, I saw her, and I started talking. We had a bit of a conversation. I said, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I went for a run this morning, uh, you know, and just, 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 just bringing up that conversation. She's like, oh, really? You're a runner? Yeah, I know. How cool is that? What a coincidence. Like, you know, you're a runner. And she starts telling me about her running events and how she runs half marathons. And as she's talking about marathons and half marathons, I'm just thinking, oh, dear, just put the shoes away. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't start running <laughs> from that day onwards. When she told me that she ran marathons, there's no way I could do a marathon. So I had to do some more Facebook stalking. What else do we have in common? And I, saw, I saw that she liked basketball. I thought, okay, here we go. Basketball. I love basketball. I used to coach a basketball team. I played in America a little bit for basketball, just touring around. I love basketball. She plays basketball as well. Awesome. Do we have any basketballers in the house? Hey, anyone who likes a bit of b-ball? We do. We have a few b-ballers. All right, all right, all right. We're going to have, a, gonna have to have a game of some b-ball, hey? So we were just, I thought, okay. At this stage, I was messaging her on Facebook, and I said, hey, do you want to meet up? And I had play some basketball. Du -du -du -du. I love basketball. Awesome. Let's meet up. So I met up at the auditorium, which is at the, 
at, at, at the college, and uh, I'm standing there, I'm just shooting some hoops, and I'm waiting for her to come in. And here she is, she arrives, she walks in the door, and I, I kid you not, every 10 steps, a guy had to stop her and have a conversation with her. I kid you not. It came through, she was talking to this guy, and then she kept walking, another guy would come up, oh, hey, you know, then they would talk to her, until she got to me, and when she got to me, I looked at all the guys who, you know, she stopped out and I said, that's right, she was coming to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right, she was coming to me. And we're playing around, playing some basketball, and I said to her, I said, let's have a game of three on three. I said, but there's conditions. I said, if I win, okay, best out three, if I win, then I get to take you somewhere. I get to take you to a secret spot of mine. Actually, it's a secret island, a private island back where I'm from when you come up for the next big camp. That's right, it was a big camp romance. Right here. Who knows what could be going on in this tent right now? Hey. <laughs> I said, I want to take you to, this, to this, this spot where, you know, I'll take you snorkeling and stuff. And she said, okay, okay. And I said, well, and if you win, then you get to decide what you would like to do with your opportunity. You can make me do anything or, or you can have me do anything. So, it was game on. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. She's a girl, play easy, you know, like, I'm the, I'm the champ, uh, just play easy on this girl. I said, okay, you go first. I was being polite, I was being a gentleman. I passed her the ball, she got the ball, and all of a sudden, just snap, she gets past me and does a layup. I'm just thinking, what, who is this girl? I can't let her win this game because I've got to take her to this private island, right? So I'm like, all right, all right, Jack, took my jumper off, you know, okay, it's time, I go, I, I, I've got to show her what, what I've got, I've got to show her what I've got, gave her back the ball, you know, she went to take a shot, just, get out of here, get out of here, that's right, just like that mic went flying off my face, can you hear me, yes, and I thought, oh, I better calm it down a little bit, she might think I'm a jerk, you know, like, she wouldn't want to date me if I keep doing that, so, uh, you know, I, I got the ball back, and I made sure I got the next shot in, and then she got the ball back and she got the next shot. I think, oh no, oh no. I got the ball back and I ended up making a nice long shot. It was still just a, just a one-pointer though. And uh, it was tied to all. I thought, I've, I've got to beat this girl. I've got to beat this girl. I get the ball back. And she steals it off me. And I kid you not, she takes it out to the three-pointer and does a fadeaway three-pointer shot and gets it in. And right there and then, my hopes and dreams of dating this girl just went down the drain. I just thought, oh my gosh, she's won the game. And she was cheering. She's like, yeah, yeah. There was, a, there was another guy walking past her she was friends with. And she's like, I won, I won. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Don't go to that other guy, please. It's like, not this soon. You know, not this soon. Anyways, we're chatting, we're laughing, and uh, I was expecting that, because she still had the option, right? Like, you know, she could do everything she wanted. I tried to make this island sound interesting. And we started chatting, I was just waiting for her to say, well, you owe me, you can take me to the island, or something like that. But she didn't say a word, and we parted ways, and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, Jack, what have you done? What have you done? Anyways, it came around to big camp time, messaging on Facebook, and she said, hey, Jack, what happened to that private island? Remember, you owe me. You owe me. So I took her there. I had my friends who were also there as well because, you know, you've got to be safe. Hey, you've got to be safe. So my friends were also there. Uh, they, were, they were hiding in the bush and uh, me, and my, me and my wife, I wasn't even dating her at the time, we were driving past and they just walked out of the bush with a spear and uh, my, my friend's indigenous, Aboriginal, and so he just walks out of the bush and, like, you know, just no shirt on and he's got a spear. And my <laughs> stepdad was like, what, who is that? And uh, I was just like, oh, Jeffrey, what are you doing here? You know, even though we had already organized it. Oh, I've just come for a spearfish. Oh, okay, cool. So, you know, he was like spearfishing while we were, you know, in our private little island as well. Uh, just, just making sure everything was kosher, you know, making sure everything was all right. We got chatting and everything like that, and uh, time passed, and I was a youth leader, and more time passed, and 
I actually organized for her to be the social leader, uh, just so I could have more time with her. She was social as well. She was, she was a good leader for that. And uh, we organized this social, this jungle-themed night, her favorite uh, ever cartoon character, wasn't a cartoon character, but favorite ever show growing up was George in the Jungle. So I dressed up as George in the Jungle. Uh, and uh, it was that night, we are packing up after this youth social, and uh, that's when I asked her out for the very first time. And uh, the rest, the rest is history. You know, but after, after some time had passed and we were dating, I asked Samtara, I said, you know, what was it about me that, that attracted you to me? You know, like, what was it about me? And she said to me, she said, Jack, do you remember that time when we had that Youth Connect and no one wanted to take out the rubbish? Nobody wanted to take out the trash, whatever you call it. Nobody wanted to take it out and you got there and you were taking out the rubbish. I remember seeing you there with hands full of rubbish walking out to the bin. Now, hey, here's a hint for you fellas out there. Any married men out there, take out the rubbish every once in a while. Your wife will appreciate it. (laughs) But I was thinking, what? Taking out the garbage? Taking out the rubbish? That attracted you to me? What a weird thing, right? But as I thought about that for a while and I was thinking about Jesus, I was thinking about all the rubbish in my life, all the things that I've done wrong, all the times I've stuffed up, all of that rubbish, all of that sin in my life, and how Jesus took out my rubbish. He took it out. And he nailed it to the cross. Wow. I've told you my love story. I want to tell you God's love story. The Bible says here, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, wow. You know, from the very day, first day one of creation, God actually formed us out of the dust. He formed us out of the dust with His very own hand. And the Bible says that he, that he breathed into our nostrils. Now, the word for breath in Hebrew actually means spirit. So in other words, he, he literally breathed his spirit into us. He nurtured us into his hands and he looked us in the eyes and he says, I love you. We were in perfect paradise, perfect paradise in perfect relationship with God. But then along comes chapter 3, and in chapter 3 we see this serpent, this serpent named Satan or Lucifer or the devil come along, and he he says, you know, does does, does God really say he loves you? And and, and Eve falls for his tricks. This other man comes on the scene. He falls, she falls, and Adam falls for his tricks. And she takes a bite of that apple, directly disobeying God, deciding to run away from God. And they literally run in the garden. They know they've done wrong. They run and they they, they hide in the garden. And what does God do? The very moments that Adam and Eve run from God, what does the Bible say God does? It says that he comes down and he searches for them. And he says, where are you? You know, he, he knew where they were. Where are you? The Bible says that Adam and Eve, they they left the Garden of Eden. And the Bible says then God put a, a cherubim on the gates. And you might not know this, but a cherubim is an angel that never leaves God's side. That's the role of a cherubim angel. So the very first time that Adam and Eve 
left the Garden of Eden, the Bible suggests that God left with them. That he was, he was chasing them. They ran from God, ran from God, ran from God, and landed up in this place called Egypt in slavery. And when they were in slavery, they were crying out for 400 years. And God said, I hear your cry. And he brought them out of Egypt. And he said to Moses on Mount Sinai, he said, make a place for me. Make for me a sanctuary so I may dwell among you. We started running and running and running. But God was chasing and chasing and chasing. And it was all right for a while. But then the people who started worshiping in this temple, this sanctuary, it just became mundane. This became the motions. They said, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. They would go to church, but there was no heart involved. And so this army came along and, and they left, they, they went into this place called Babylon of all places. And they were slaves again because they kept running from God. Running from God and running from God and running from God. But God kept pursuing them. He pursued them and he he called them out of exile. When they came out of exile, they said, God, we don't want to run from you anymore. And they made all these strict rules, but they became so jealous of God. They was like, God is just for me. God's not for you, Gentiles. He's just for me. He's just for me. They missed the point. They kept running from God and running from God. And so God himself literally came down as a man called Jesus Christ. And he came, he literally washed people's feet. He raised people to life. He healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He did everything he could for humanity to say he loves them. And what does humanity do? They put him on a cross. Running from God. Running from God. God literally comes down, pursues them in the flesh. And what do we do? God, Jesus, dies on the cross and is laid in a tomb. But my friends, not even the grave could stop our God from pursuing us because he burst forth from the grave. Not even death could hold him to stop pursuing us. He has been chasing you from the very day you were born. Our God loves you with all his heart. He will never stop running after you. He looks at you and says, you are my wife. You are my son. You are my daughter. I will never stop running after you. I will never give up on you. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, not even the grave, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither depth, neither height nor depth, nothing is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing to our God. Let's sing. Jesus, because Jesus is not ashamed of you.
You want to start running from God. You want to start walking with God today. I have you raise your hand. Be unashamed of Jesus. Yeah. So I see people looking around. It's okay. it's okay. It doesn't matter if your friends are putting their hands up or not. If you, in your heart, want to walk with Jesus, stop running from Jesus, stop walking with Jesus. Hand nice and high. Amen. Amen. I see your hands. And God sees your hands. He sees your decisions. You may lower your hands. Let's pray. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. You've seen all the decisions on the hearts of these children today. And Lord, we know that we will continue to fall and fumble. But Lord, we thank you that you never give up on us. You have always been faithful to us, no matter how unfaithful we have been. But Lord, you see these decisions. Wrap your arms around them. Lord, I feel your arms around me. I'm getting this fast. Lord, protect these decisions that we have. One of these children these tents. Thank you for never giving up on us. Amen.